Oh, hello, world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. The cat in the moon follows 17-year-old Nick through a transformative month away from home in NYC. During that time, he falls into a group of friends, each on their own complicated journey, all while he's forced to confront the fallout of losing his father, the reality of his mother being in rehab. Look, this film, I'm telling you right now, is fantastic. It's uh, funny, it's heavy, it's very real, uh, and it's the feature directorial debut for one of our next guests. Joining me now in just a second to talk all about it, writer, director, and star of The Cat in the Moon, Alex Wolf, and stars Stefania Levy owen and Tom. I mean, Nelson are here. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. I think, there you go. Audible wooing in the room right now. That's the level of excitement we're at. We're going to bring them out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a trailer for the film. So let's go ahead. Let's run that clip. We have a new student, Nick. Why don't you introduce yourself? Well, you already called me Nick, so they kind of know what they need to know. So how you been? I'm really great. I mean, not great, you know. mother is the only person that I can call for you. I'm responsible for you. I can't call her because she's a mess. Don't call my mom Nick. a mess. Take it back. Nick. Take it back. No, 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 Take no, it back. No. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. No! I like you so much. I have since I met you. So much time for all the other serious stuff. For now, I just, I need to be, I just want to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Alex Wolf, Stefania Levione, and Tommy Nelson right here. Do it up. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Woo! So happy to be back. Oh, it's so great to have you back. Welcome Love back, this. sir. Welcome this is back. crazy. It's like a weird dream I'm going to wake up from. It feels like yesterday we were just talking about, on this stage, oh, I'm working on this film. I'm really excited about it. And I know. now it's done. It's got a poster. It's massive. Look at that. It's got a poster. It's just my face. It's just, just your face. Massive me. We're, we're going to zoom in on this fun. part. I no, love to do this. please we're don't. We're going to make it You already much got my larger. schnoz sticking out here. <laughs> yeah. You definitely don't need to zoom in on it. That takes a level of confidence and trust to put your full profile on your poster. Well, I didn't make the poster. And I wasn't like, hey. Thing just you put didn't my do. face. That's no, I didn't. I didn't make the poster. Who cut the trailer? That's a great trailer for the Amazing. Film Rise. Uh, oh no, jump, uh, jump Cut. Sorry, Jump Cut cut it. Um, and they did an unbelievable job. Yeah. Unbelievable. I saw that trailer and I was just like sitting there sobbing. I was like, it is so good. <laughs> I it saw. Is so good. <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off. I want. Oh, no, it's still going. I feel like, okay. I have a few more minutes in me. Yeah, let's, we've got all the time in the world. Um, <laughs> I saw a post that uh, uh, I forget which theater it was, but there it was. It was this poster, and then next to it, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's pretty that's cool. That's nuts. Yeah, that's that pretty is, cool. That's a life goal. Yes. Your movie sitting on a, on a marquee next to Tarantino. <laughs> Tarantino now. was so freaky, and next to um, John Carpenter's, uh, the, the original Halloween is playing there. Oh, it there. was literally by. It was oh, in the it's middle. Life right now. It's crazy. It's wild. That was wild. Well, congratulations. How's everybody doing? Uh, guys, I was saying while all the trailer was playing, you're all fantastic in this film as well. Uh, an achievement all around. How's everybody feeling right now? How's press? How's the circus, as it were? How's all this going? It's Say nice super things. fun. Yeah? Well, we had the premiere yesterday, so it's very surreal having it be on this side of yeah. the coin. It feels like yesterday that we were filming, so it's just exciting to be all together again, too. Yeah, it's really cool because it's been a while since we shot the movie, so it feels like like a big reunion. And uh, it, shooting the movie did feel like we were like a group of high school friends or something, so it's like a high school reunion. It's so awesome. All the boys lived in the same house when we were making the movie, yeah, my parents' house. And so we'd all wake up just groggy. My mom's like, do you guys want breakfast? <laughs> Super nice. That's amazing. Shout out to mom. Always. <laughs> Always got to give a shout out to mom, for sure. Always. Uh, well, okay, so you guys filmed it. How old were you when you made this, man? You were what? 
I was r- I was an embryo, so it was right, right in the beginning of no. I I, I <laughs> shot it like uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, so I was uh, twenty. I just turned twenty. That's wild. I'm thinking about like that. Was that because maybe maybe I'm wrong? But my gut says that's terrifying as a twenty year old to be in charge uh, of this big of a production to have this story that you've poured so much into to have Mike Epps on set. You know what I mean? You got to direct Mike. Like, what was that like? Is there a certain amount of anxiety or 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 pressure that you had to navigate in, in bringing this dream to reality? I mean, I get anxiety to like go shopping for clothes like I get anxiety about everything so you can imagine it was pretty um it was like pretty intense but you go into a bit of a zone of like I think how people when they're going to like fight uh in like the army or something you just kind of put on this uh, you go into almost shock but fight or flight mode and I went into fight and I just went into this is totally okay and I can do this and it's gonna be totally great and then that mean voice would be like you're screwing this up you're ruining everybody's career you shouldn't do this movie oh my god you're terrible look at your nose and I'd be like stop stop I would just have to quiet that voice down uh, but but you know every day you kind of quiet that voice down a little more and you kind of just make the movie a little more and I just had to take it day by day it was only after like watching the movie like the first assembly that I was like I really I mean the movie is made crazy it was a four-hour first cut so really yeah it was a lot of a lot of me to look at (laughs) yeah that is tough you have to whittle down a lot of you on screen and that's got to be a difficult decision to have to make and to kind of pull yourself and be objective one of the things i was really curious about i said in the beginning this film gets heavy there's some heavy moments there's some like real uh serious performances and things you guys have to kind of excavate and conjure up i want to get to you guys in a second but i'll start with alex what was it like to have to bounce between being in front of the camera and finding those places, but then having to pull yourself back and kind of keep one foot on the other side of the lens so you can guide your fellow actors and stuff. Uh, well, I'm still kind of like, um, I'm still kind of recollecting, I'm, I'm thinking over it. I don't exactly know if there was a total like um, cohesive method to it. It was sort of an everyday, each new scene is a different animal type of thing. Um, but I guess the main thing was like I gained like um, just about 30 pounds and, you know, I shaved my head and got a bunch of tattoos. And so and I pierced my ears and I, and I kind of felt like a different person a little bit. And so uh, having all that, it made it a little easier to separate myself from me. Uh, but also I look at directing and acting as one thing. They're kind of one um, animal when things are going well. They're both working towards the common goal of making a really good movie and uh, my favorite directors are ones who have been very emotionally involved and very personal and intense and uh and and who love their actors and so when you're an actor in the movie you have to love your actors and worship your actors and understand them because you're in that position so i guess i felt like we were all in one cohesive blob or something it wasn't like oh i'm a director i'm an actor or whatever it was kind of like we were all this organism that was kind of moving yeah in this together and like i joked that i was like yes it uh it's very hard to wear multiple hats at the same time but like you can do it physically like you can put one hat on top of the other on top of the other and it like might fall off but you just have to like okay focus on it and you can keep the hats on so that's kind of how i thought was that like your speech to the, the team look guys i just want you to see i can wear you can do it you can wear multiple hats yeah, yeah. and you showed up uh, and, everyone, and everyone's like oh one. crap what have we signed uh, up uh, this guy's putting out a bunch of hats. <laughs> and, uh... To be fair, he's wearing them very well. And a crown. Nice. <laughs> Form of a hat. Uh, <laughs> did you guys, did you two meet, uh, or were you friends before coming through the Rye? Was that the first time you guys kind of came in contact with each other? Uh, and yeah, so we met when we were both 16, filming Coming Through the Rye. That was it, yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, from the first time we met, we came very close and then I actually read he he got me to read the script while we were filming and I mean so so it's crazy that again we're on this side of it and years have passed and now we're promoting the film but yeah I, we, we became friends um, when we were both 16 and and so doing this film was really special so I just had a flash to when we were doing coming through the rye and like we were leaning against the car you were leaning against a car and you were like it's really good <laughs> and it like meant it was like the first she was one of the first people who ever read it and I was like whoa it is he's like you like it 
Um, and then years later, she changed her mind. But at the time, she thought it was really good. <laughs> that first impression. <laughs> first impression was really yeah. good. That's and then since then, it's all changed. Yeah. But How much has it changed since you were 16? Since that moment by the car, how much did the script evolve over time as you've been pouring into this and getting it to work? Yeah. A lot. Um because I could not get these actors to say the lines as written, which is great. It was perfect. They were just, uh, no, I wanted people to like improvise and and, uh, and I wanted everything to be like, I wanted to follow the road of what was going on in the moment, not what was going on in my head or the vision I had. I more wanted to find out what the vibe was in the room and follow that. And and I, I believed in that and that, and that style of filmmaking. Uh, but it changed a lot. I mean, I probably did like, you know, hundreds of drafts of the script. I went back and read an old draft recently and it was really tough. I was reading, I was like, whoa, I kept like two lines of dialogue in this entire thing. But the characters really stayed the same and the scene order strangely kind of stayed the same, like the form of the form of the film kind of stayed the same. But none of the dialogue or anything that happened. <laughs> what did, uh, w did you write with Stefania in mind? Or just guys, she's the first person you've shown. So like Eliza, you know, you see that character and you're kind of perfect in that role. Were you writing it thinking of Stefania? Like she should play this? Or did you not even, were you not even thinking that far ahead? Well, I wrote it when I was, f I wrote the first job when I was 15. So it was before okay. we, before, before we met. So, but honestly, I wanted Stefania to do any of the roles. Like she could have played my role. I wanted her to just be in the movie. Uh, and then Stefania started getting really busy and like people started to really find out that like, oh my God, there's this amazing actress named Stefania Owen. And I was like, ah, no, no. Um, and so I started to get worried that she wasn't going to do it, but then I um, convinced her to do it. And, uh, and I told her that um, she had to do it. I, w I wouldn't settle until How did he convince it. you? How did he sell you on the Everyone in the audience was like, that doesn't seem right. It was actually, I remember, because at the time of reading, I didn't think that I was going to be a part of it. That just what didn't really cross my mind. But years later, um, when I came out of high school, I moved to New York. And then we were all hanging out. We were both doing plays. And then I remember when you said we were all, like, partying at your place. And that's when you told me, you were like, I, I want you to be Eliza. I was like, and I knew exactly, because I remembered the script. It was very vivid in my mind. So, I mean, I, it. It didn't really take. I literally a lot remember. To it, I literally, it was yeah. best of my love was playing with the emotions. I was playing, and I was like, da 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 da, and I was like, I want you to be Eliza. Da 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 da. That's amazing. So it was. It was meant to be. It had to happen. You knew in that moment. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play this part. Yeah. Sorry, Tom. You still over there? <laughs> We're getting to Tom. This You're, is literally the most up. silent I've seen him in. Like he's coming up. Five years. Tom does not Say strike me as a rush. Uh, and so I have a lot of questions for you, sir. We're going to talk to you. He literally talks all the time. Does last really? night I couldn't it's get him to. Just, he slept in my house last night. I could not get him to shut up. Now. Well, I mean, that's a that's a reflection of how respectful he's being of the conversation so right now. History, you're Never coming, buddy. Don't you worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grill you. <laughs> I got a lot of questions. He's ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what? Let's just jump into it. Let's get to it since uh, we we've, we've shined a light on it. As I just said, you, sir, do not strike me as a Russ. How did you come to this script? How, did you know that that was gonna be your character from the second you read it? What was the audition process like? Talk to me about getting involved with this movie. So I begged Alex to put me in this. Really? <laughs> it was like the opposite of Stefania. I was like, I'm unemployed. I need you to give me a what job. What song was right playing now? when you were begging? I'm in so I, much college debt. I have you so much You literally have debt. no idea. <laughs> Please. No, well, actually, I don't know if you were, well, so we met on, um, on My Friend Dahmer. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you remember this, but like before we even shot anything, uh, I had a self tape to do, and the character was like kind of similar to Russell. Do you remember this? And in the middle of it, you were like, "Wow, maybe you could play this character in this movie I'm doing." And then you kind of told me about Cat in the Moon, and then we didn't you really revisit it until maybe <clears throat> like another year or something. And then you sent me the script, and I just loved it. And you kept saying, like, are you going to be available to, like, help me out? And I was like, like, how? You're like, are you going to be available to help me out? Like, in what capacity? Like, behind the scenes or, like, as an actor? And you're like, I well, just want to know was, if you're I was available. Out, I was out to Michael Shannon and a few other people <laughs> at that time. And then Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, but, no, I have to say, like, Tom, I know Tommy as a person. And honestly, this performance, I watch it and I sometimes get emotional watching how unbelievably amazing he is in this movie and how different i mean he's like a different human being and for that time tommy just decided that he was gonna be 
Russell during that time for, for better or for worse. Sorry, go on, I interrupted you, but no, I just have okay. to say for all my jokes that I'm going to be making at his expense for the next interview, he is really, it was one of the most brave and terrifying. This role is terrifying to play. It yeah. is not likable. Yeah, which is what I was very well, curious he's kinda about. Like, he made him kind of likable and charming, but, you know, he says a lot of terrible things. Which is not easy to do, which is why I was surprised to hear you say you were begging to, to be this character, so I'm fascinated by what it was. Did you? When did you find out you were going to be Russ? Um, like, they want to shoot it. I think I think it was like Christmas or something. It was on Christmas. I think. He Worst case me. scenario, if you weren't going to be acting, what do you think he was going to ask you to do? Because he was like, "You're going to help out." I had no out? idea what he what he needed from me, but he's my life partner, so I probably would have done what I I probably would have done anything. No, but yeah, and then I found out, and I was I started to get you know nervous. I mean, it's it is it's kind of an intense role, but uh, you know, I I uh, I knew a lot of kids in high school like that I think um, so that's sort of what I that's I drew on that when I was playing Russell but you know it was I had a lot of fun for as horrible of a guy as he can be but yeah you know I know how important it was for you to nail the, the authenticity of the the vibe of where they are of this period of time uh, and how personal it was did that factor into, I need the perfect people to play this friend group. I need Skylar. I need Tommy. I need Eliza. And you knew in your head, like, this is these are the pieces of the puzzle. This is what I need to make this feel real. Yeah, well, it's like the Sidney Lumet thing that 90% of directing is casting. And, I mean, the thing is, is you... I think it's important for other, like, uh, filmmakers when they're about to make their first film. There's, like, a lot of... Sometimes you think the people you know that are super talented, you want something shiny and new for your movie, but sometimes it's really important to work with the people who are just the most talented. And I knew, like, I was like, Stefania, just, you know, she's my friend, and, and Tommy the same way. And Skylar put himself on tape, uh, and it was immediate. I just gave him the part, and I, I just felt like there there's these immediate clicks, and I think you have to follow that instinct. you got to follow that pull in your heart and not think well I don't know I want this thing because of this thing and it gets this money and it just just go with the person who's the best and you will be happy forever I think it gives you the gold you, you were talking earlier about and kind of joked how nobody would say the lines that you wrote but you left room deliberately to get that authenticity to get those interactions Tommy was it was it ever scary or challenging to improvise with a character like Russell for fear that uh, I went too far or I shouldn't have said this like wh what was it like navigating those those waters that's a also great that's a that. great question um, yeah I think it, at first it really was but then by the end of it, I was uh, I I felt like I was so I had such a good grip on who he was and like where he was at any given moment in the script that it didn't feel that scary anymore, and I think that you know it it just kind of became our dynamic like we the dynamic you see in the film was kind of mirrored in real life by with us to a lesser extent not as extreme obviously you know but yeah I mean that was scary at first but. No, I think eventually, eventually it, it became weirdly comfortable, you know, as messed up as that might sound. And he dressed like, I'm not kidding, he dressed like the Russell character for about six months after the movie. I'm not kidding. Like, yeah, well, I never wore, like I that. never wore like joggers before. I didn't know they were so comfortable. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, what was I doing wearing jeans and pants this whole time? Like, why was it? This is way more comfortable. I'm just going to put on a hoodie and some Adidas or something. And, and the gold chain was just comfortable. The, the gold chains and leaving the blonde hair. All right. That was, well, I had to leave. <laughs> that was a choice. That seemed like a choice. <laughs> the blonde hair I actually had to keep for something else I did that I booked like right after. They were like, you're welcome. Yeah. I, seriously, I think that was part of it. I made him dye the blonde hair and then it's suddenly turned out to be the best thing for your career ever. They were like, I was like, I'm, I'm, the, I'm not going to have the blonde in like a week. So, you know, just disregard that. They're like, no, we love it. You know, and then I had ended up. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> We're gonna go to audience questions in just a second, uh, but again, I gotta congratulate. You. It's just, it's a fantastic film, uh, debut or otherwise. It's just, you knocked it out of the park. It's wonderful. You guys Thank are all you, wonderful man. in it. It's a lot to be proud of. Uh, where can people see the film and when, man? Uh, what's coming out at Village East Cinema and at the Roxy uh, this Friday, October 25th, and it's coming out at the Lemley in NoHo in LA in theaters. And then if it does uh, well there, if you guys go, then it'll go to other cities and theaters, and then it'll be out online everywhere. I can't believe I just nailed that. 
crushed it. <laughs> I was panicking the entire time that I was just saying that. Panicking. I had it written down in case you messed it up. Don't worry. You didn't tell me that. It would have been easier to just read it. Lie. I was just I sitting there and I was like, felt like I was at a spelling bee. I was like, uh, Village East at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, in you. I'm gonna do the Q and A's too. So okay. if you want to ask any questions there, yeah, uh, at, at Village East on Friday and then in L. A. No ho. I didn't have that written down. So. <clears throat> okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, we're just Perfect. we're just we covered that. We're just yeah, getting we're just, wild. Just zip zap up, baby. We're just you know just. <laughs> <laughs> I got the flower pants on. We can do it. Uh, how so many? Before we open, least... before we open oh, yes. the question, I just want to say working with these two actors just to say it one more time working with these actors was the greatest experience of my life and if you can cast actors that you love you will be happy for all your days to find you Tommy thank you for doing the movie and I want to say that on a public stage drop the mic <laughs> literally a public stage yeah there was one clap but you could applaud more yeah, for that one, literally one it's clap it's really vulnerable. a singular clap one clap there might have just been a flop I guess it was uninspiring <laughs> Uh, we've got at least four. That's fantastic. Let's go. We've got microphones in the room. First question right here. Do it up. Hi, it's Hello. so nice to see you all. Uh, my question is for Alex. So I am an aspiring film director and writer, and I wanted to know, do you have any advice that you can give for someone to be successful in this field? That's a great question. Are you a writer as well? Yes. Do you write? Um, do you act at all or no? Um, I'm actually dabbling into it, yeah. Dabbling? Well, I guess my suggestion would be to make some short films um, first. Um, make some short movies uh, for no money. And uh, maybe invest all your money in just a decent camera. Do it with terrible sound. Um, do it in your house. Spend no money. Spend no money. Spend no money. Uh, and get just start the experience of it because you'll go you'll realize if you're hooked and you have to do it for the rest of your life or you'll realize if you hate it. Um, I think it was easier for me because I was an actor and so transitioning into it I at least had a grip of what it was but I, I had no idea what directing and writing would be but I guess even in a bigger sense what I would say is that the world is super cynical about young filmmakers and the world is sort of designed to make you feel like your movie doesn't matter and that you can't make your movie. And let me tell you that I had five years of people telling me that I was never going to make my movie and people telling me that I was just a kid and people telling me that, you know, you know, we're not going to finance the movie of some naked brother, you know, like I had a lot of people, you know, kind of doing that. And I, I, all I will say is that don't let the cynicism of the world and the people's fear that you're gonna, you know, surpass their expectations weigh you down in terms of making your movie. Just make it. Just don't listen to anybody and go make the damn thing. Because when you make it, even if it's terrible, you have a movie. Like, this movie is what it is. I have many things I would change about it. I, I love it, but, you know, there's a lot of things you could do. I'll fix on my next one, but I made it, and it was a battle, but I am so happy that I did. And so make your movie is my advice. Just do it. Don't worry about it. Just fucking do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's great. I'll single clap to that. Uh, was there... <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> was there... You mentioned uh, the short films that you had done a couple prior to this. Was there a moment in making this you were like, thank God I did those because now I know how this works and I can do this here? Yeah, except most of them are pretty terrible. But, uh, I mean, I guess a lot of them I was like, I I'm glad that I'm not, you know, I have, like, a few more people helping me and I'm glad that I, like, messed that one up so I know that, but... You, see, you joke that they're terrible, but that's kind of like the best part about doing those short films is you get that experience. Maybe they're terrible. Yes, like but I do wish some of them were better. But yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, some of them this were just is amazing. terrible. No, that's I'm really, really, bring really, really proud of this. No, it brings me a lot of joy. I had to go through the badness to get to the. I'm yeah. not throwing shade on those old films. I've never seen the short ones. I forgive my ignorance. Sure. They, they could be great. Sure. I don't know. I know you've seen them and you <laughs> hate them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I, I do know this one's great. Uh, I got a few more in the Thank room. Let's man. go. Microphone. Do it up. And your shoes are fantastic. Thank Amazing. We should. Everything's fantastic. You guys should close up. His shoes are incredible. If the camera can do a close up on them, I don't, I don't know if you have it, but just show them off. In a great way. Gorgeous. Gorgeous shoes. Thank Sorry. you, sir. Hi, my question is also for Alex. So you were not only the star of the movie, but you also wrote and directed it. What was the best part of being able to do all three of those? That's a super nice question. Um, the best part was working with the other actors, both as an actor and a director, um, was getting to, I guess, probably my, there were many favorite moments. Every single person on this movie, I felt like, had a moment where I'd be watching them and then something happened where... I can't explain it. Something changed, and then it wasn't a movie, and then it wasn't, 
uh, the script and then it wasn't in my head and something came out of them. And like, I could think of two specific moments. I was in the park with uh, Stefania and we're in a scene at the end and she's there and she said, uh, well, now I'm crying. And she looked and tears started coming out of her eyes and I got to watch the magic happen in front of me. And both as an actor and a director, it was like the most magical moment. There was another moment with him where we were on the roof and he was freestyle rapping and, and something just happened with him and I don't know what it is but it was like he got on a train and the train was speeding into the, and all I had to do was just make sure I didn't get in the way of his. And I guess that was um, like nothing I've ever experienced and I've seen it as an actor, but to have that with your own movie and see these actors just tee off in front of you was like nothing I've ever experienced. It was like what I imagine heroin feels like. Um, it was pretty incredible. So I guess working with them was easily the best part. You realize those things in those moments when they're happening. When did you, uh, looking at footage, realize that you were you were getting the vibe that you wanted, that it felt real, that it was authentic, that it didn't feel forced? I would know on the, on the day in the in the moment. You'd know right there. Yeah, I think I'd know there. I would. We had a good vibe. I feel like there was this weird like telepathic thing where we all we all had a vibe of if something was working or not. Yeah, for sure. Uh, two more. Perfect. Next one, right there. Uh, hi. Um, I just wanted to say like. As someone who's been born, raised, like, growing up in New York City, like, and sort of the same age as the characters in the movie, I feel like it's been long overdue for a movie like this. I've been, I'm just so excited to see it. Like, I see the train that I take, like, every day. <laughs> no way. You know, it's just, I'm really excited to see this because I think it's going to oh. be, like, a really good representation of what the youth is going through, especially kids growing up in the city. Um, but my question is for Alex. So Thank you. Um, like, do you have any idea of what sort of genre that you want to go into in, like, filmmaking or acting since you are so, like, young? Well, thank you so much for saying that. I'm growing up in New York. And shout out to the G train, because that's the train you see. Um, uh, you know, I just, everything has benefited me in life to not plan it out at all. And, uh, you know, I probably am going to direct another movie. Not probably, I'm definitely going to direct another movie. Um, but in terms of acting, you know, like, uh, uh, I, I just kind of go with what uh, makes my heart sing, I guess, as cheesy as that is. Like, because sometimes when you're trying to figure out what you want to do or, who, you, like, what actor you want to be or something, it's just, it's just bullshit. It just doesn't work. And, like, I was just, we were in Italy premiering Cat in the Moon, and... It was like this amazing experience, and then I kind of took like a little vacation for myself, like five days of reading and like eating and stuff. And I wasn't thinking about movies at all, and I was kind of just really focusing on myself. And I thought, you know what, I'm okay if I don't really work. And then this movie with like Nicolas Cage, my favorite actor in the world, came in called Pig, and like it was one of those moments where I'm like, if I just let the world decide what's going to happen, and and I still fight, and I still fight for the things I want, but I don't try and carve out, I have to do this to get here, and ju I just have to let things, and I just think that's been the only thing that's benefited me, um, although that I did have to fight tooth and nail to get somebody to make this damn movie, so that'll still happen, but I guess I just won't try to plan out what my career genre is, because I just think it's like kind of poison, but I'm really excited that you grew up in New York and you want to see it. I would love if you brought all your friends and stuff. It's really fun to watch with a group of friends. You guys agree, right? Like, like groups of friends yeah. see themselves in it. Uh, what were you going to say? You, you raised the mic. Yeah, exactly. I was You're like Eminem in 8 Mile when, he's, when he chokes. <laughs> he was like, I, no, I was going to say, I mean, I feel like there, there's so that I really like what you said, too, because there aren't a lot of good. It's just so boring what I'm going to say. I'm just going to repeat what you said. Uh, there's like not a lot of. <laughs> That's why, like there's not a lot of good movies about, you know, being in high school that feels realistic, like high school really was. It's either. You know, you know what I well, mean. I do feel like I do feel like most of the, the movies about high school are either like really, really, really cynical and really negative about who they are, which is totally fine. There's totally a place for that. And you can almost go like, oh, they're so horrible. And, or there's, you know, movies where I feel like, you know, they're like, well, ben, oh, if you go to prom with Ben, did you go to <laughs> Becky, Becky Belacy? You know, all those like stupid names and stuff. I guess I just kind of wanted to make a movie where it's on a ground level with it. And maybe I don't know, I guess it isn't too 
uh, cynical or too. I, I I did not go to school in the city. I, I was I grew up just north of here, but it made me nostalgic for a time I didn't even have. Like that's, oh, what that's it was the like, best compliment like, ever. Felt, so I was like, man, like I I could see stuff that me and my stupid friends did in what was happening in this movie, and that's how I knew. I was like, all right, this guy he nailed what he's going for because it's like I, I wish I could do that again. Like it was just so fun to see that, uh, and again, it was an experience. I never did that in the city with my friends. We did that other places, but it is. It feels legit. It's it's that's why I mean like it's real. It's heavy. It's got everything there. And then it's funny too when they're on the train it's doing what they're it's doing. It's funny too. Yeah, it's it's got all that stuff in it. I think you're really gonna dig it. We've got can I do one more? I'd love to do one more. Let's get one more question. Uh right here. Hi Alex. Hi. Uh first off, congratulations. I can't wait to see that. Thank the movie. you. Um, what was it like working with Mike Epps? Because we're all used to seeing him in like comedic roles. So what was it like seeing him in a more serious tone? Um, thank you for asking that question. Love him. Love him to death. Um, he, uh, it's funny because I really didn't know his comedic work as much. I saw the movie Bess about Bessie Smith. Um, I think it's called Bessie and I saw it on TV and I was like, that guy is so soulful and he had something about his eyes that made me really like really sad and, and, um, really, I don't know. He just like melted me. And I saw that, and then weirdly, randomly, then I saw like a couple days later, I saw a movie he did called Sparkle, where he played um, he played a pimp lecturing this priest about what why what they do is the same, and he's kind of like, well, what's so different? Totally serious. And I thought, okay, this guy has some magic in him that is. I just thought it was an immediate thing, and I offered it to him, you know, on the dime, and. He was really busy with his stand-up schedule, and it was only kind of after sort of research, or researching him, like, wow, he's like a really famous comedian, and I really know him from his serious movies. Like, but he's like people, you know, stopping him on the street all the time, uh, and he had this crazy stand-up schedule. And I called him, and I was almost in tears, and I was like, I really want you to do this movie. I was like, more than anything, I was like, I can't sleep, I can't eat. If you don't do this movie, please, please. And he was like, he went, okay, 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 I'll do it. <laughs> We were on the phone. He said, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll come. I was like, next week, I'll, I'll be there. I was like, yes. So it was amazing. And he is amazing. And he is like an open valve. That guy, he will, yeah. You, there's nothing you can ask him to do emotionally that he can't do. He is completely open, completely vulnerable, um, and awesome. Great questions, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being an awesome audience. So We're going to wrap it up real quick because you brought up Pig. Have you worked with Nick Cage yet, or is it still coming? Yes. You've done it? Yeah, we just worked together. Um, uh, Alex was a really good guy to work with. I just found him. Uh, he's the best. He I, and, and, and he's my favorite actor, and he's one of my um, inspirations as an artist, as a person, and he's become one of my best friends in the world. He just, like, FaceTimed me two nights ago. We had... Such a great time. He, it, we had such a good time in this movie. I can't even tell you. It was awesome. And we were both like kind of unrecognizable. I had this mustache, I had this slick back hair. He had this long gray beard and gray hair. So we were just like walking around Portland. We went to go see Parasite together. We just hung all the time. What was it like the first time you met him? Walking in and meet a guy like that. The, the, his his reputation precedes him. You're you're a huge fan of his. That first moment when you're meeting Nick Cage. Well, the cool thing is we were both getting awards at Toronto, <laughs> and it was like the ideal way to meet him. It was right before the movie, and I saw him, and I saw him, and he was in a cowboy hat, and I started tearing up, and I started shaking and I went up to him and I just said okay you have to know this before we start working together you're my favorite actor and I said I've seen every single one of your movies I've seen I was like and I was like vampires kiss did all the stuff then I was like deadfall he's like you seen deadfall I was like yeah he was like wow okay and I was like yeah I, love, I was like I just love you and then he, he liked that and then in my speech for the awards that are the, the movie got uh, I said that one of the main inspirations for me was leaving Las Vegas and raising Arizona adaptation even start acting so uh, and Family Man was huge inspiration for me as a kid. So, yeah, living the dream, man. Well, uh, congratulations Thanks, again, man. all Please of you. Please go see it. Yeah, everybody, go see this film. Uh, do you want to tell? Her, you want to see if you can do it again, where they can see the movie? I'm not gonna take the risk. Okay, you do it. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna take the gamble. Uh, we're gonna. Stefani, do you want to do it? Do you know? No, I don't know. <laughs> Stefani's like, no way. <laughs> No way, the premiere was last night. No way. And I am checked out next I'm time. checked <laughs> out. You got one more day ready. these Q&As, and then I'm out of <laughs> here, bro. That is it. She's like, I already got a ticket back to New Zealand. I'm ready. Uh, it's, oh, shit. I got October 25th at, uh, oh, I don't have the theaters. I got the date. Oh, you no. You just blew it. I you dropped blew it. the ball. Oh. You blew it. This is my last one, people. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. 
I got Village East Cinema at uh, October 25th, which is the Friday. I'm going to be there for a Q&A at, I think, 7 p.m. ish. That's great. when it's going to play. It's beautiful. Then it's going to play at the Roxy. It's going to keep playing. Then it's going to play in L.A. at NoHo Lemley. Then it's going to be everywhere online. Uh, and then hopefully other places, too. Oh, definitely other places, right? If we go see it. Yeah. There we go. That's very musical. Yeah. And you could also just rewind this and see what we said the first time, because we totally nailed it before. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good, too. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being such an awesome audience and hanging out with us. I want to thank you, you so guys much. and congratulate you again. Keep it going. Alex Wolf, Tommy Nelson, Stefania Levy Owen. Go see the cat in the moon. You're all invited go. to my house. Yeah.